G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday sort of lunchtime here in Australia. Market's down a little bit, so again, a lot of just sideways movement. It's up one day, it's down the next, then it's back up, then it's down. It literally is all just moving sideways. And look, I've found some interesting things in the Bitcoin charts that I will have a look at, but I'll leave that to the end. Let's just go on and have a look at the markets. As I said, down 3.6%, still above that 1.5 trillion though, so not too bad. All right, Bitcoin dominance has dropped, so now to 40%. ETH dominance dropped a little bit as well, so obviously people are getting more into the altcoins, I guess. And gas prices, 26. Again, not great, but look, they're nowhere near as horrible as what they've been. They've been you know, up in the 300s uh, at times when they've gotten really, really bad. So as we can see, there's a bit of green here, which is weird considering the overall market cap is down. So look, let's have a look. What's really pumped in the last 24 hours? Because we can be there's, we can see there's been some, excuse me, we can see there has been some gains. Uh, Dogecoin, there you go, 9.8%. And we've got uh, some information about that. So what's pumped? What's done the best? All right, 0x, Pirate Chain. God, is that still around? <laughs> Leo token 12%, Dogecoin, Theta Network, Zilla, Polkadot, um, Kasama, Stella. All right, so there's a number of coins there with a few good gains. But again, the overall market cap is down, so I'm guessing some of the ones that got hammered have probably been hammered pretty bad. Not in the top 100 then, I'm going to say. It must have been all stuff outside the top 100. So what that says to me is that people are really scared at the moment. Before, everyone was going looking for the next gem, particularly outside the you know, top 100 into the 200, 300, and maybe even beyond. And now they're all just very nervous, so they've probably dumped a whole stack of those more risky coins, and they're staying in the more... The better, the better known ones, the ones with a bit more sort of street cred, you could say. The ones that have been around for a little while. So again, things that are in the top 100. But look, we can still see some losses. So Decred down, Polygon's down, XRP's down, uh, Internet Computer's down. No major losses and no major gains. But again, considering the whole market is down 3.6% and there's no major losses or kind of gains in the top 100, it says to me that it's all the real risky stuff. Again, when people were just going fishing, looking for you know the next Bitcoin or you know the next Ethereum, whatever it was that they were looking for. So my guess is if you go, you know, to the, you know, to, I don't know, 300 and 700 and 800 and all the rest of it, they've probably been pretty brutal corrections back there. And that's why for me, I tend to just stay with things in the top 100. I do have some uh, investments in things that are out the top, out of the top 100, but they're things that I believe are going to probably do pretty well and make it into the top 100. But very few are out of the top 100. Out of all my coins, I would say like less than probably... 2%, maybe 3% of them are outside of the top 100. Majority of them are within the top 100. All right, so again, a, a very mixed bag there. All right, we're going to go on to the stories and then we're going to come back and have a look at something very interesting I found in the Bitcoin charts. So number one, Polkadot. They, they have an ETP and it's about to hit the Swedish stock market. So the main financial world has taken notable strides to incorporate various crypto assets. A new exchange traded product, exchange traded product, sorry, so that's an ETP for Polkadot recently surfaced on a mainstream exchange in Sweden. So very, very interesting that uh, it's happened over in Sweden. You know, uh, particularly in America and states and in, in the states, they're really still waiting on you know ETPs, ETFs, and all those kind of things. Uh, you know, to get regulated, and I'm sure they're not too far away. But look, maybe that has something to do with why Polkadot had a little bit of a gain today. Now, why Doge may have had a little bit of a gain today. I think it was about 9.8%. So Coinbase lists Dogecoin on their Coinbase Pro. And usually Coinbase Pro, it only takes, you know, like literally a couple of days to maybe a couple of weeks. And then it's on the regular Coinbase. So maybe that is why the Coinbase listing, you know, it's a real thing. It's going to have its pump. Usually the... Uh, the pump kind of comes before it hits.
but at the moment Dogecoin is up 9.8% roughly and look at the time of this was up 9% so there you go Coinbase Pro said that in a blog post that users could transfer Doge into their professional trading accounts with trading exposure to launch on Thursday if liquidity conditions are met. It'll be very, very interesting. I'm not sure how, I mean, don't get me wrong. I know Doge is liquid. It's definitely got some liquidity to it. But, you know, what's its liquidity like right now considering, you know, we may possibly be in a bear market uh, and again I'm about to get that out I don't think we are but look things are going to let us know very very shortly and again as things I saw on the chart all right speaking of Coinbase so they've added their credit card to Apple Pay so now you don't actually physically have to have the credit card you can simply uh, have it on your phone uh, and go and use it there so I mean more mainstream adoption this just continues to happen and it's growing and it's growing now, if we're going into a bear market, <laughs> I think the growth will probably be pretty limited and stunted. But anyway, this is still really, really big news, particularly for that mainstream adoption, because a lot of, you know, the younger people these days, they're not into carrying actual physical credit cards. They got it all on their phone. They're literally their phones are, you know, a part of their limb, and <laughs> it does everything for them. I mean, you know. I've got my phone on me almost 24 7 you know outside of when i sleep uh but yeah i mean the younger generation they really literally cannot live without it so this is big news uh congratulations on coinbase you know getting this added to apple pay i know the uh, rules and regulations around getting it on apple pay aren't exactly easy to get uh through but they've managed to do it so again that mainstream stream adoption it is happening it's just a slow process all right, so more Polygon news. They just keep teaming up with everybody. So Sweet integrates Polygon slash Matic into its broad scale consumer first NFT platform. Now, I'd never heard of Sweet before, so I wanted to know exactly what Sweet is. So Sweet is the first NFT solutions provider to develop a platform that can mint and distribute NFTs at scale while maintaining a strong eco-friendly, that's the big word at the moment, the catchphrase, eco-friendly and consumer first approach. Has just announced it has completed integration to the Polygon blockchain, previously Matic Network, into its NFT solutions. So again, basically everyone is teaming up with uh, Polygon slash Matic at the moment. They just continue to grow. They are an absolute behemoth. Now, Sweet, again, what exactly is it? So Sweet is, Sweet is pioneering a new way for brands to distribute NFTs through engaging consumer experiences via a multi-chain or chain agnostic approach. So Sweet itself is chain agnostic, but they're teaming up with Polygon to become part of the Ethereum sort of network, but on a layer two solution. Now, with the addition of Polygon, Sweet is now leveraging the Polygon slash Matic Ethereum sidechain, avoiding the high gas fees and slow transaction processing that would otherwise prevent uh, brands from creating and distributing NFTs at scale. So again, I didn't really know much about Sweet before until I read this, and look, that's really all I know at the moment. I'll have to do some further research into them, but it just shows the strength of Polygon at the moment, or slash Matic again. They are Polygon, but a lot of people still remember them as Matic. They just continue to grow and grow and grow. And yeah, the sky's the limit for these guys. And again, even when Ethereum 2.0 comes out, everyone who's on Matic does not have to leave Matic. They will most likely stay with Matic. They don't want everyone piling onto the ETH 2.0 itself. That's the whole part of you know shards and side chains and things like that so things like you know optimism and matic and that they can't ethereum can't scale big enough by itself to handle you know the entire world if it goes worldwide it will still need matic and matic is you know again it's got that first mover advantage at the moment so congratulations to polygon uh and you know i'll have to have a look into suite to have a exactly what they are but nfts chain agnostics always good as well it means they'll be able to easily you know get onto other chains now last but not least uniswap so uniswap sponsors esports uh squad team secret with a hundred and twelve thousand dollar grant so uniswap has announced a partnership with esports organization team secret the deal comes with a hundred and twelve and a half thousand yeah, half thousand dollar grant awarded via community voting. 
So you might catch the familiar Uniswap uh, Unicorn logo in unfamiliar places soon, such as esports competitions, player jerseys, uh, and in the video game uh, video game streams as well. Look, this stuff is going to be huge. Esports, you know, kids love computers. I mean, I grew up, you know, when computers were just kind of coming out. You know, Sega Master Systems, you know, and whatever was before that, and you know, all those kind of things. So. I was, you know, part of that first generation of that whole uh, computer, you know, being available at home narrative. But now it's just mainstream. They have these massive online competitions. You know, kids will literally watch YouTube of other people playing games. It's it's unbelievable. So I think this is really, really smart by Uniswap and it's going to push, uh, you know, their product even further and into the next generation of kids who are going to grow up with cryptocurrencies and aren't going to see them as this taboo thing that uh, they're not really sure about because you know the millennials and things like that they, they love this kind of stuff and the generation coming after that they won't know any different you know there's kids already that now know about bitcoin and ethereum and that they don't know a whole lot but it's already in their brain that it's a thing so by the time they're old enough and working and making money and things like that they're not going to be like, oh, I'm not really sure about these cryptocurrencies. There's all this FUD going on. The FUD will be well and truly done with by the time some of these kids grow up. All right, so it says down here, Team Secret CEO John Yao is quoted as saying that the team is exploring investing in cryptocurrencies to hold on its balance sheet as well, following similar moves from firms such as Tesla and MicroStrategy. Again, you know, the adoption is there. Are we going to have just smooth sailing all the way? No, things are going to be pretty rough. Now, speaking of how things could possibly get rougher, let's have a look at the daily chart to start with. So this is Bitcoin. Now, we are still in this upward trend. So this confirms that we are in the bull market. Now, if we break out of this, this will be the first time that we have ever broken sort of, you know, properly, and not so much on the daily, we can close uh, underneath, you know, or really wick underneath, and there's no major issues there. But if we've ever broken outside of these channels to the downside, it's been a confirmed bull market. And again, it's hard to see on the daily, and we don't have to worry too much about the daily, but we can see we're just coiling up, coiling up. And as long as we kind of keep following this, again, we can have wicks that come down and things like that, but if we have you know, again, really, if we have full closes outside of this and they last too long, well, then obviously things have changed. So that's the daily. That's what we're looking at the moment. Now let's go to the weekly. And we can see, same thing. This is going back since 2012. Whenever we've been in a bullish trend, we've never broken to the downside, ever. Now we've wicked outside of it. We can see there's, you know, definitely a number of wicks that have kind of wicked to the downside, but we've never broken to the downside. We've broken to the upside and got even more bullish. So again, this was where it all started. This was kind of the low, and maybe that could even go back to here, you could say. But we've gone from here, got to the top, come back down. Sort of got almost to the top, came back down, and then we broke to the upside. We've always broken to the upside every single time on the weekly. Now let's go to the monthly. And the monthly is showing something very, very similar. So again, we've you know definitely got down and sort of touched the bottoms, broken to the upside. Except for here, this would be the first time that we kind of had you know two red candles with, or not so much, I guess we've had them down here. But that's the most we've ever had on monthlies in a bullish trend. We've never had more than two red candles. We got two there. We've got two over here, uh, and we now. So the month has only just started, so it's the 1st of June. So that is what I'm looking for at the moment. If this closes in the red, that means things are different. We have never had two, more than two monthly closes in the red in a bullish trend. So again, really, we're waiting to see what happens at the end of this month. I mean, well... Not so much. Again, we can still go back to the weekly. We've never had a weekly close outside of this. As soon as we have a close on the weekly, not so much the daily, we can have weeks that come down, but a weekly close outside of the trend to the low side, that has been the indicator that we are in a bearish trend. Now again, we've got all sorts of players and things here and they probably will try and manipulate it. But the issue is if they try and manipulate it too much, 
they can then cause a really big dump. And again, it, it'll depend whether they've got all this money on the side and they're willing to lose some money to make more money. Uh, and I know that doesn't make sense, but basically, you know, say you've got $100 million you want to invest in Bitcoin. You can take $20 million of that and, you know, sort of just buy the dips and then just sell really, really hard. And you might have enough, and particularly if it's coordinated enough, and 100 million probably wouldn't do it, but, you know, hundreds of millions and maybe billions of dollars and things like that, coordinated attacks could do that. So they get, you know, a couple of big companies, right? We've all got 100 million each. We're all going to put, you know, 20 million in each, just slowly but surely buying the dips, and then we're going to crash the shit out of it. And with the other 80 million we have, we're going to buy up a ton really, really low. So that is something that could be done. And that might be something that we might see that will change this. But currently, if we have a weekly close below these channels, uh, that generally means we're in a bear market, particularly for the weekly, weekly and definitely for the monthly. We are currently sitting right on that line. If this month doesn't close uh, in the green, Look, it can still close in the red as long as it is just an indecision candle. It just can't close because, again, we can have three reds. That's not necessarily what means we have to go into a bear market, but it just can't close below this channel. So that's what I'm looking for at the moment. So that's something I hadn't noticed until today. Personally, I think we still are in a bull market. I think we're going to see something like this. Two, again, kind of big red closes. And look, maybe even a third close where Bitcoin just hardly moves for the rest of the month. It stays around the 35 sort of thousand, $34,000 level. Something sort of like this. Another close like that, but over here before we get that next push upwards. But look, there's no guarantees in life. I could be completely wrong. I've just got my fingers crossed uh, that we haven't. So really, again, I'm looking for the weeklies. Do we close outside of these bands? Because it's never done it before. We've definitely had, you know, kind of wicked down into it, but never closed below. When we have wicked down to it, we've closed above it. So that's what I mean. You can see right here. So we've definitely wicked down below, sort of, but we've always ended up closing up inside these channels. We've never closed outside of these channels that we've been in. So that's the weekly. The daily, you know, we've definitely had closes, uh, sort of, well, not so much closes, but they've closed on the line, but we've definitely wicked down. And we can see even on the weekly, we've wicked down, but we have never closed outside of these channels once we get in them. And at the moment, this is where we are with the weekly. We still got some wiggle room and we could go sideways probably for another couple of weeks around this. And again, that would then lead to the monthly closing basically where it is right now. It's still a red month, but it's an indecision month. That we can do. But yes, watch out for the closes on the weeklies and on the monthlies. That basically says to me, really, the month of June uh, and the next couple of weeks are really going to decide whether we are in a bull market still or whether we truly are in a bear market. Scary times, but anyway, it is what it is. And again, for me, I'm just going to hold. That's just what I do. I'm not going to panic sell anything because it will most likely be market manipulation and I don't have that great an exposure to uh, altcoins. Don't get me wrong, I do have some exposure to altcoins, but I'm mainly in solid projects and I mainly bought them for pretty good prices. Uh, and for me, I've already learned my lesson. I can ride out you know, the next three or four years to make even more gains again. It's not financial advice. You've got to do you. You make your own decision. But again, that's what I'm looking for in the charts and that's my plan of what I plan to do. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but if you were, you outplayed the market, and congratulations and well done to you, and I'll see you next time.